Well, I don't really know where to start with this. This is a donation to my channel. Uh, an incredibly generous donation uh, from Myford Boy. I'm sure you all know his channel by now. And uh, he recently did a, a review on this engine. And he got in touch with me and said he'd like to donate it to my channel. Surprisingly enough, I didn't say no. <laughs> I just, I, I've, well, I'm saying, still blown away by by this. It's just fantastic. So what is it? Well, if you watched my Void's video on the review of this engine, <clears throat> you'll know that this is a Chinese-made 10cc single-cylinder water-cooled four-stroke petrol engine. And it's based on a design by Edgar Westbury from the 1960s, who called this engine the Whippet. <coughs> so from now on, we're going to call this the Whippet engine. Um, I'll put a link in the description to Sterling Kit, which is the website where you can buy this if you have got loads of money and you want one. <laughs> but no, I, it's just just absolutely, um, well, <laughs> just incredible, incredible donation. So... I'll put something next to it so you can see the scale because although this gives you a really good view of the engine rotating around on the turntable, it doesn't really show you the scale of it. Right, so there's my ever-present red wall can to give you a size, some, some idea of size. Um, probably stands about like, five inches tall, about, about that maybe, maybe six. Um, but it's a truly beautiful, beautiful engine, and the, the machining on it is, is fantastic. Now, there's several things I've got to do before I can run this engine. Um, it needs a fuel tank, uh, which I haven't got, so I'll have to make one. Um, it also needs a water tank for the coolant. Now, I don't intend to run it for long periods of time so i'm not going to bother with a water pump i will simply provide a, a, a just a coolant tank and the thermos siph siphon effect should cool it long enough for the sort of short periods of time that i'm going to run it so, so that's that needs to be mounted on a baseboard and also it would be really nice to get it to run something so i've got to think about i, I was thinking some sort of water pump you can get there is a water pump accessory made by the same people um that make the engine but it's about 130 dollars i think it's quite expensive so um i'm trying to probably come up with something else but yeah for now that's it next stage get the other parts made a little bit of progress on the mountain for the little whippet engine i've been saving that coffee can for years and i knew i was going to find use for it sooner or later <laughs> and it's perfect for the water reservoir for the for the cooling jacket on on the motor um, i've drilled the holes in the base there's four of them to mount the engine obviously the uh, cooling uh, reservoir is now in place so i've got to make a fuel tank for it that's probably going to sit somewhere here then the this is the electronic ignition model, module which provides a spark for the plug there also needs to be a, a battery and a switch for that. I'm probably going to mount that in a box over here somewhere. So, yeah, it's coming along. It's, it's coming along nicely. I made a start on the fuel tank. Um, I'm a big believer in the KISS method of engineering, as in keep it simple, stupid. So it's, it really is going to be, be simple. I'll show you what, I've, what I'm planning to do. Come in a bit closer. There we go. So I've got a bit of two inch diameter brass pipe. Um, I've, got a, I've machined up a little fitting for it, a little threaded fitting. So that will go in. I think that's in the top of that. There. And then the uh, little bit of copper pipe. That goes in the bottom like that. So that's the basis of the fuel tank. And then we've got these two plates here which are going to make the uh, the ends of the tank. There'll be one like that, and there'll be one I'll solder on like that to make the ends of the, the, the end caps, and also, obviously, the support to hold it up. Because they'll be, they'll be like that when they're done. 
So that's the plan. I, I, I opted for a fairly small fuel tank. I mean, I don't intend to run it for very long at any, any, any given occasion. So I think that's going to be more than adequate. So basically all I've got to do now is solder that lot together. Well, it's time to do some soldering. <clears throat> and this is how I do it. I'm not saying that this is the best way of doing it, but this is the way I do it. Been reasonably successful. Uh, I've made quite a few brass uh, boilers over the years and this has worked for me. So I've got the, this is uh, this is an old cake decorating turntable and I bought this one off of eBay years a year, well decades ago now actually. Um, next, paid next to nothing for it. Let's take this off, right? But uh, as you can see, I use this mainly for spraying, but the, the thing about it is this really heavy aluminium casting. So it's ideal, it's, you know, stays firm. And um, yeah, it works well for that. It also works well if you want to solder something and you need to get round different sides. So that's what we're going to do today with this. So what am I going to do? Right, well, what I've done is I've made a circle of solder. And this circle of solder fits inside nicely inside the end of the brass pipe, like so. And I will liberally coat that with get it right up to the edge and then liberally coat that with flux and then basically i will also put flux around the plate get it lined up make sure you get it around the right way with the big hole at the top and it's all square and when it's in the right position i will then simply plonk a weight on the top that holds it all nicely in place so nothing's going to move and then apply the torch right let's get on with it then so I've got plenty of flux on the on the end plate, as you can see, and plenty of flux around the inside lip of that. So making sure I've got the larger hole uppermost. Place this where we want it to go. I think that's about right. Check inside to make sure that the the uh, solder ring is down, which it is. Okay, make sure we got this straight, which we have. I think let's turn turn that a little tiny bit. There we go. Put our weight on top. Holds everything nicely in place, and we're ready to apply the heat. There we go. We're going to warm the plate up first before I put any heat on the actual pipe to get this plate nice and warm right, there we go Just starting to see the solder appear. And once I can see that all the way round, and we're done. Simple as that. Now just let it cool off and do the other end. Progress has been made. Fuel tank is all done and mounted. The next job is to make a box up to house the electrics, which I am going to fit in here somewhere, probably over here. It doesn't need to be very big. There's a small battery, the ignition unit, and a switch, basically. Uh, the water tank isn't, this isn't fixed down yet. That's just Put there for the time being as is the engine obviously the whole base will be given a nice coat or three of finishing oil when all the wooden parts are on but it's starting to come together yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm quite pleased how it's turned out so far hopefully that will that will do the do the job nicely yeah yeah so it's coming along all right 
Okay, so on to the next part, which is the box to house the electronics. Well, all the parts are finished. It's just a matter of putting it all together now. Little box I knocked up, which will uh, take the electrics. Um, it's all been given several coats of finishing oil as well, the wooden parts. So yeah, just got to bolt it all together now. And then hopefully we can get this running. Well, it's all together. It um, went together quite well. I'm quite pleased actually. It all seems to fit. All the parts are where they're supposed to be, which is which is great. I've checked the spark. We've got a spark. All that really remains now is to put the fluids in. I think that's 20 millilitres of engine oil in the crankcase. Obviously water in the coolant tank and then a 25 to 1 petrol two-stroke oil mix in the fuel tank. And hopefully we can get it to run. But uh, I'm quite pleased. I, I think I think the, the little baseboard and everything that <clears throat> sets the engine off quite nicely. Got room to put a, to get it to drive something should I need to um, in the future. But um, yeah, right. Let's see if we can get this thing running. Well, that's about it for the little Whippet engine. A couple of quick pointers for anyone who's thinking of buying one of these or has got one and is trying to get it to run. It does seem to be a little bit sensitive for the throttle screw. I've got that open about one turn. I actually put a mark on there so I could see where I was. It does seem to be a bit sensitive about that. Um, for those who doubt whether the thermo siphon method works, it does. I could actually see the water moving around. Well, not only that, the water in the can got 
quite hot quite quickly. So obviously, if you're not cooling the water, then you, you really can't run it for that long because the water will get very hot, as I said, very quickly. But no, it, run, it runs a treat. And um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic little engine. Um, so once again, I want to say a massive shout out and thank you to Myford Boy for donating this to my channel. I, I saw his video and I thought that the little Whippet was a wonderful engine, but never thought I'd ever get to play with one. So thanks to him. I have um, so I shall put, be putting links in the description and everything to his channel and to his video and also to where you can get one of these engines so um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video I'm sorry it's been so long but there was a lot to cover um, and as always thank you very much for watching cheers <laughs>